No, that's what I know. When you're making a pina colada, you just do one to one jizz and rum. That's all you fucking needed. Get that milky consistency and you can just slam them back. It's perfect. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. That's good. You get guys who are like dehydrated, so it really thickens up the mixture. Or now it's not necessarily dehydration, it, it just has to be the first load of the day. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, hey, everybody. Uh, we didn't see you there. We were just having a little private discussion. Uh, this uh, is pina coladas. <laughs> of course. Or, or, or penis colossus. <laughs> As <laughs> well. In the rolls with the murder hobo gang here. Uh, real quick, because I'll forget. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you are too busy living a life like Carol to actually participate in, you know, playing one shots with us. Hey. Uh, watch on YouTube afterwards. Uh, and there's also a merch store, I think, over there. That sign, right over there? Yeah, right there. Just dangling right there in front of your face like a, well, you know, <laughs> I'm saying. Like, 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 like an inappropriate participle. <laughs> Very good. Very good. good. Which, how about we introduce ourselves? Uh, Carol, why don't you go first? Great. Um, hi, I'm Carol. Hey, wait, no one's talking over me? What? Impossible. No, I'm Carol. I've been and a long time. talk about how she... Oh, <laughs> did I wait until you were going to say something important? Hey, I'm going to say it. I'd rather be known as the girl who's talked over than a chicken fucker. Thank you very much. Um, but I'm a long time player, mini painter. Uh, and I like to hang out with these knuckleheads and talk D and D. So that's and, me. And, and we do love having you, Carol. Absolutely. Um, All right, Blake. Why don't you go next? <coughs> I'm I'm Blake. I am on here sometimes. Sometimes I squirt poison out of my satch. Sometimes I introduce the chicken fuckers. Uh, <laughs> but on that note, this episode, like most is for mature audiences only. <laughs> because someone has to be. <laughs> because yeah, we definitely right. aren't. And finally, last but not least, comes the chicken fucker. <laughs> Scott, <laughs> how about you introduce yourself? Well, well, no, well no, 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 no. Does, 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 he, does he come last or does the chicken come last? Uh, well, I, I, I don't know if the chicken really does anything. Noah, hi guys. Um, I'm Scott, and uh, I guess I'll probably never live that down, but you know, so be it. That's the way it is. Um, long time player. Um, I've been playing with these guys for only about nine months now, uh, and we ran a one shot last week. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, and as a quick shout out to our merch, this is an example of some of the things you can see here. Like that. They're really nice shirts. I like it's them a great lot. When you're fucking chickens, you put it over your head. You can see right through it so you don't miss anything. <laughs> but, 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 it, but it gives you the perfect level of camouflage so that they don't necessarily see you. I know but you can stink up on them that they way because they're trying to catch a chicken's hard. I don't know if y'all know, but catching chickens is difficult. It but, works well, but what, you would actually fine. know? You actually know? Well, do you well, remember I, my? I mean, I've been out on a farm before. I've caught a chicken. Do you remember my tip from Saturday? Caught that chicken and dragged it to the ground. You you catch it by the edge of a cliff so that it'll push back. Ah, uh, okay. That's that. That's a good. That's a good tip. If there's a tip, if there's a cliff works, around, sure. Work, works for sheep too. Yes, I'm sure it does. I would know. Yes, I'm sure it does. No, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's me. That is him. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm the host tonight. I don't know if you guys figured it out. Sucks to be you if you didn't. You're stupid. And you should turn off the show right now. Idiot. Uh, anyway. No, 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 no. no. We're, we're, we're just joking. We love having you. We always love having you. Thank you for watching. I don't know what you, why you're not doing something better with your time, but thank you for joining us. <laughs> <coughs> all right. So uh, let's get down to all this chicken fuckery business. Last week, we had a uh, 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 a special DM hosting. I'm not saying he was any good, but he was special, <laughs> especially if you watch this episode. Maybe it was special, all right. Cast. 
But uh, uh, we played a, a little one shot, the legitimate businessman social club, where uh, uh, the Don was under attack from assassins and he needed his most trusted lieutenants to save him. You kind of figure out how that goes, but Blake, you are our DM. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, the concept was initially supposed to be that four non chicken fuckers. Uh, ha- would receive word of an assassination attempt against their uh, beloved and charismatic leader who was essentially blackmailing them all into uh, defending him and they would rush to his aid. Uh, shit went sideways and we ended up with what we have. Go back and watch Saturday's show. Uh, actually, don't. Uh, <laughs> just, just take it as a, as a foregone conclusion if you haven't already seen it. Shit went sideways. Actually, actually, we need the views. Go back and watch it. <laughs> Give me comments that you, how much you like what I'm doing. Um, but uh, how'd the concept uh, come to uh, fruition? The, the concept came to fruition actually because we had been discussing, uh, toying with the idea of uh, non-good characters, and I, I, I had kind of already initially been toying with the idea of having something with more self-motivated. I don't necessarily want to say evil because I would have considered all of the characters lawful or lawful evil, sure. uh, which we can get into a, an alignment show. I think we, did we already do an alignment show? Yeah, we did, but it's honestly not that good. We could do it better. Yeah, we can do, we can do it again. Yeah. We would just but, replace Carol with Scott and it'll be fine. Yeah. There you go. Sure. I, think, I think, I think what I did between the roles, I probably already did in my head. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> But we'd been toying with the idea of having some, some let's call them more self, self-invested uh, uh, characters going on. So I'm like, all right, here's a bunch of basically mercenaries up for grabs who can do what. and uh, Some behind-the-scenes stuff that some people might not have been aware of was that I did go through and sign all of the characters. Uh, just, a, just a quick blurb of backstory uh, explaining why they might want to see the Don dead or why they might want to not. Uh, There was one of them that was supposed to be working against the party. And I was kind of interested to see how that might play out uh, for those of you who are Tim Curry fans, a la the movie Clue. Uh, One of the things that I didn't do was I didn't assign everyone the assassin role, which I kind of wanted to. Next time. Next time. Next time. <laughs> All right. So, um, we had a few players that night. Uh, Carol, you were playing, right? You, you can tell us what happened. Wow. Yeah, Carol, uh, without the beer. All right. So, first of all, let me put it this way. You guys know what you would have to do <clears throat> to get me to play all the time, and that is pre-record the shows or run it another night because I oh, just oh, can't I, do. I thought you were going to say just blame you for everything. <laughs> well, you know what? That seems to be a theme in the campaign, isn't it? And she shows up when you do, so. <laughs> no, it's, I, I know I would love to talk about the campaign, you know, because I never seem to ever get on a Tuesday show after the campaign because I'm also playing every other Tuesday, too. I play a lot of games. Let's face it. I really love this game. I love D&D. I love Pathfinder. I love tabletop RPGs. I'll hang out with you guys. So, I don't think any of us but, uh, As for this game, I did watch it on, or listen to it, because I, what I do is I uh, play it while I'm working, so I can listen to all the shenanigans. And uh, what in the hell happened? I mean, I, I basically put a comment on Twitter about how you had, oh, some, uh, I think Frank wrote it was, uh, you have to be really mature for this one. I go, I'm almost 50, and I don't think I was mature enough for this show. <laughs> but uh, it was highly, about age, people. It was wow. so yeah. highly entertaining. Um, you know, the funny thing is, I did actually, when the Don wasn't dead, and they took like three hours to get to him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was that was the first thing is like, the Don should be dead at this point. Then I actually did suspect maybe one of the characters was in on it. I, I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't really think about it too much. So 
I didn't guess who. I guess you guys were all paying you know, real close attention. Do so you want me to go ahead and answer that real quick, Carol? What's that? Do you want me to go ahead and answer that real quick? Yeah, yeah. You did. You did have somebody, right? There were there were two other assassins that were going in addition to the one that that was assigned, and it was right. The final showdown, if they hadn't have gotten distracted, was intended to be three versus three. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I did hear that. Okay, so you... When, when, when they reached the Don, one of them was already dispatched by Nikki uh, because I was rolling for these on the side. Oh, uh, that was good. Yeah, and uh, the third one was distracted by the uh, inflame, inflamed uh, uh, burger stand. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, y'all set that on fire. We, we, we set that on fire. You guys set two things on fire, so I'm proud of you. That is three. definitely three. a was it three? What the heck did I miss? I remember the first. I remember the first two. I'm, what was the third thing? Oh, maybe it was only two. I, th I thought they it was only oh. two. I mean, because they two did. years place and the McDonald's stand. Yeah. Speaking oh, of, I, I, I thought there was a fire the the between the rolls. Is brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> wow. uh, here I am drinking Coke. So, I'm a Shut up, Carol, you're ruining our sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, right. We really should be. Home. Sorry, we all know what the real sponsorship be, should be. It's Don Julio. Don Julio, <laughs> yes. Before we came on the air here, that uh, that's what he should have named him was Don Julio, <laughs> but. But I said it was it was it was as usual. It was entertaining. Um, I think the players definitely sent this off the rails uh, more than the G. I think Blake did a good job GMing it and dealing with all your shenanigans. Um, and there were lots. I love. Oh God, I love Thor. Um, he just he was. I, I just love the character he portrayed. He was amazing. He usually is. The uh, yeah, for the yes. they, I really, they can't see the chat. Uh, we are being reminded that Don Julio was kind of a sponsor. It did, <laughs> it did get mentioned, but I thought that's what the Don's name should have been. Uh, he, it, it was giving its contribution. Uh, <laughs> it's, I drank a lot of Don Julio that night. Let's put it that way. Contribution. Well, Scott, why don't you elaborate? What happened in this uh, bedeviled yeah. one shot? Hey, Scott. Yeah. Why? Why yeah. did you do that? That was my other question. Why the chicken fuckery? <laughs> so, so the as as Blake was mentioning, we all kind of got like a, a general bit of motivation, okay, as to why you know we want to go save the dawn. And I understand that it was part of the thing that you know, if if you're playing and you're saying okay, you have to go do something, and then. You know, you're running a one shot. There's a yeah. You have to make sure that you have a good hook that that you know that your players are going to be vested, wanting to wanting to actually do this. If not, they'll sit around the bar and you know fuck around. So the the, the point being is that you know the Don had you know compromising information on all of us. So I spent most of the day trying to figure out what would be compromising information, and. I don't know, for some reason, I guess I've been playing in so many campaigns very, very straightly. I kind of went off into a weird, to, to, a, to a weird, you know, space some, somehow. And I remember this movie, um, uh, Super Troopers, and there was this one scene about in order to cause a distraction, they have a guy having simulated sex with with a bear and he, it's just a guy in a bear suit but he's doing this and then they call him bear fucker and i thought okay that's what i'll do that you know that somehow the don has information of an embarrassing sexual nature on me that i'm not this big tough guido uh you know because i'm i'm i play Gil guido the killer pimp which was a takeoff from that old tom hanks movie bachelor party to where you know He's giving a bachelor party and they have these hookers and there's this one character there named Guido the Killer Pimp. So uh, I decided to play him and played him up, you know, a little bit over-exaggerated. But by the time it got to the point that, you know, these 
priests, priestesses of Ogma say, I have to confess, I'm thinking, well, what is the most embarrassing thing? Well, it's probably the information that the Don has. And the information the Don has is this terrible information of a sexual nature. And then it just kind of keeps them. Do you mind if I, if I, if I read out what I sent you? What? Do you mind if I read out exactly yes, what I sent yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. Go because, ahead. Go ahead. Because I hadn't even considered that being, but as, once you describe it that way, I'm like, no, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> so, so this was sent only to you, right? Everyone, everyone else had a different had a different backstory, but specifically to you, uh, your backstory. And I'm going to paraphrase here: was uh, uh, you are familiar with the group uh, as the muscle. Uh, the Don has uh, had you give him certain incriminating information about yourself uh, right. that is to be released upon his death. So giving you a means to... Giving me uh, a means to try to keep him alive. Correct. And But uh, uh, this is how he ensure, ensures loyalty. Uh, that's right. So, so I had this motivation to keep him alive because I didn't want this really bad information to get out there, you know? Uh, and then so, and since I figured that this would be on, you know, Guido's mind, whenever he gets charmed in essence to force confession by those priestesses of Ogma, this is already on his mind and it blurts out. And then I had to think on the fly, well, what could be really embarrassing sexually? I'm thinking, well, having sex with a chicken is probably pretty <laughs> The reason he thought of a chicken is he actually looked left off screen and the chicken was coming out of his bedroom. <laughs> and, 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 and we all know that's just because he was recording for Mexico City. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, so anyway, at, after it came out, there was no holding it back. It was just just one of those things that you had to kind of roll with. And, uh, and, and the fact that that happened about 90 minutes in, which means about, <laughs> oh, seven or eight shots. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was about a half a bottle of tequila and six beers. So it was, uh, it was, it was pretty, and it, it, it kind of went after that. I was very much into uh, I'm Guido, the killer pimp as in, I got to smack my bitches around and keep them in line. And, you know, ain't no dick being sucked unless they get paid first, all sorts of stuff. I mean, it was, Oh my gosh. Hashtag, hashtag toxic masculinity. Hey, hashtag hey, Blake, toxic masculinity. Blake, for the record, when I was listening to his role and I was like, you know what? I really, I really wish I could have played because then I could have been a total foil to to that character. I was like, geez, maybe I should have been one of the one of his hookers, but in reality, I'm the one running the show, not him. Right. And, and I probably would have I probably would have played that, you know, trying to preserve this fake sense of masculinity. And yeah, that 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 that, that would have played into it because you have this deep, dark secret of fucking chickens. And that, you know, you don't want and, and, and if you had run into the priestesses before the prostitutes, that's probably how I would have I because I, I was not expecting I was not expecting that outcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So and, and that's, that's, how that, that's how that happened. You wouldn't even run into the prostitutes if Frank hadn't decided to show his giant dick to everyone. <laughs> that's true. He went around the damn place, just helicoptering it around. I don't know why. What? That's the point. Frank's not here to ask why in the friggin' world do you do but, that? Well, no, I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because he had a 19 charisma and he could. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize he had a 19 charisma. Okay, yeah. fair. That is very fair. And he uh, he kept playing, and then he kept trying to you know convince these these women from a house of ill repute uh, to uh, you know he kept on saying, "Hey, we can take a couple of hours. We can take a little break." And of course, <laughs> those were my bitches, and so I had to say this and that, and then and then we're Wait, causing man. such a commotion. Then well, that and, and the I, I loved the way that you were tying it, tying it all in too. Just because I'm like your your character was Guido the pimp, right? And I'm, Guido I'm the like, pimp. Shit. I'm, no, I'm like no shit. I'm like I got hookers. You were you were private messaging me, and I'm like I gotta tie this in. I'm like yeah, mm -hmm. sure, shit. That was that good. Part worked fine. It just didn't. Um, I just with the priestesses of Agma forcing me to confess the secret that I was wanting to protect the Don from from revealing if he died. That was, um, like I said, and, and, and we were talking a little bit before um, and, you know, Carol and uh, Kyle, you, I, I'd, I'd like to get your, uh, I would like to get your thoughts as well. Um, that whenever you're playing with, 
you know, a group of friends that you're familiar with. And that, that in essence, for, for me, I, I felt a little bit more confident in, uh, in uh, you know, going off the rails a little bit more. But I also think that sometimes that can be somewhat, dis- somewhat disruptive. And that's, that's maybe one thing if I could take back, I would probably have toned it down a little bit more um, if, if I hadn't had as much to drink as I did and such as that. Because I think that that ends up maybe I, when you're very familiar with, with your group, then that's, that's probably okay. But if it's someone that you haven't played with as much, I, I'm afraid that can almost be an off-putting experience because it kind of shuts other people out. Now, and I was actually concerned about that. So I wanted to get Carol, I wanted to get uh, uh, Kyle and, uh, and uh, Blake's opinion on that as well. Whenever things do go really sideways, if you have a new player, how does that dynamic change? Shut up, Scott. I'm the host of this show tonight. I'll ask the questions. Sorry. Carol, answer his question. <laughs> okay, so uh, what the my my problem with that was? <laughs> uh, well, but no, my my uh, honest answer to that though is because at the end of the episode, what Thor was saying was that he had no idea what was going on, and that told me that I did not do my job adequately. Hmm. Uh, and again, I don't think that's anyone's fault. Uh, not, not any of the players. Uh, it's that I didn't do a good, good enough job explaining it. And I didn't do a good enough job, uh, directing it to where it needed to go. But even, even though I thought that we were all having a, a, you know, general, it it was, it was a very good time. And that goes back to something I said off screen was that it's amazing how comfortable you can be with people you've never met. Because right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm the shithead, you know. So yeah, you can be a shithead back, and I had no problem playing off of that. It took me for a loop when someone was trying to out shithead me, but I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that may be true. But, um, but but yeah, I I do I I I I should have been more inclined to people that weren't. Uh, interacting and being as vocal and I, sh- I I feel like maybe I should have done a better job reining that in. Again, well, not to say it was it was not to say it wasn't hilarious, but it was hilarious. It was Blake's some of it was hilarious, but yeah, I get it. Um I, I get I get what you're saying too, because I do so yeah, we do have a player in our in our normal group, and God, I love him to death. And he's he's a fantastic player, but yeah, he can he can definitely um, <clears throat> send the game. He basically will just sit there and he'll make like totally inappropriate jokes. We love him for it, believe me. But it, yeah, it can. If you had a new player, maybe it'd be off putting. Um, but. But to me, yeah, that is a, you're right. It, 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 not to knock you, obviously. I think you did a good job, like, uh, trying to wrangle them. I mean, but it trying to wrangle these guys, seriously, is like hurting cats. So, you know, I think you did your best. Uh, but, yeah, it is ultimately the, the GM's responsibility to keep it on point as much as possible. So... Um, but I said, I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the whole chicken fuckery and, uh, <laughs> and the, yeah, and Guido. And I said, I, I actually, I really did enjoy Thor. I, I thought, you know, he, he was quieter, but I liked the, the sort of the, the vibe I was getting from that character, you know, it was I, all about I, honor and I did know, too. I, I, I did too. I did too. The honor of the, the, of the, um, of you guys, you know, I can't remember of the mob. Yeah, and I really, I really, really like that role. Um, so hopefully, hopefully he's watching knows that. Yeah, at least I was paying attention. <laughs> I liked his character. I liked all of them, but something about that I really, really liked his character. So, and I thought being quiet worked for it too. It yeah, I, 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 I think that's partially why I wasn't so tuned in on it was because that was how I interpreted that character based on how he presented it. Was that that was intentional? Yeah. Yeah. And you had the two loud mouths just going off and off and off. Yeah, I'm used. I mean, I'm used to that. I'm used to that bullshit. I, but. 
I would say uh, D and D. It's a it's a story RPG, whatever you want to call it, but it's a cohesive unit, and you know some of it you can definitely say, Blake. You know you got to run the game that you want to run, but at the end of the day, if you have Frank as a player, I need to plenty of opportunities to fuck around at the tavern and burn it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you know they're going to run the game how they want to do and. Sometimes you you just kind of give them a long leash on that. So I think it uh, you did just fine, Blake. You know, uh, with the players you had, and I especially like how you, as opposed to say other DMs, like to throw in whatever the players say into the story with it. Uh, especially, especially Scott's chicken fucking. But I appreciated the fact that uh, uh, Mama Vino uh, also cooked. And eight people as well. <laughs> you know what? Oh, I yeah, I did. I love that part. I almost forgot about that part. Yeah, I well, love the fact I actually gave um, Joffrey Dimmer uh, a little bit of backstory. Although I'm still waiting for one of you GMs to take that guy out because he is just way too disturbed. Well, 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 the backstory that Kyle was sent was the fact that he wanted to protect the Don because he had raised him as an orphan. Oh, so you would have learned how to cook for Mama Vino. You, know? you would have learned how to cook for Mama Vino. Plus, I just like the idea of the sweet little old lady feeding you people as well. It was picture in <laughs> Sicily, picture in <laughs> Sicily, 1945. It was a flight attendant. Oh, it was it delicious with some, so with some fin cheddar. <laughs> we made little tortellinis. It took a thousand of them to fit. Should have made her Sophia. <laughs> All right, guys, but we're going to stop talking about that. If you want to watch it, because we haven't actually told you anything that happened other than Scott's <laughs> uh, You're missing which, out. Which actually, he was presented with opportunities to. The, the, the horny chicken was pointed out to him multiple times in the corner of the courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> he was being watched. So again, guys, if you enjoy chicken fucking, uh, cannibalism, or <laughs> masturbation death cults, You'll enjoy this really fun last session <laughs> of uh, uh, the Legitimate Businessmen's Social Club. But it's Tuesday. It's still Thanksgiving month. I believe most people call it November. Are, are, we, are we doing turkey dragons next week? We are doing turkey dragons next week. You oh. figured it out. Blake, get on that. No, sorry, not Blake. You're fine. Scott, you got... Oh, no, not Scott. Carol, no. No, 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 no. What's that usual no, 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 that no. we have? You know who's a piece of shit? Tur turkey's close hey, enough to Kyle? a Hey, Kyle? Kyle, just yeah. remember something. You and I are not going to be here for the campaign. Yeah. And we're going to be off screen and in a position where he can kill us really easily. So please, please be nice to the GM. <laughs> you be nice. I'm going to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> we're both gonna be dead that's what we're gonna be <laughs> dead well you know what Taryn killed Dewey your favorite character guys you heard it here first what? I that's would... why Taryn had to die off screen alright continue Taren, oh, we're gonna monster. talk about dragons <laughs> Taryn Taren is Perpetua's <laughs> new favorite persona oh god <laughs> I'm so funny <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, but you better keep her alive because that will only go so far if I'm dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no, oh, no, oh, no. I'm, sk I'm skinning her and wearing like a big Terran suit. Uh, yeah, sure you will. Oh, then... my God. All right. We've talked about chromatic dragons. We've talked about metallic dragons. And now we're going to talk about the dragons that either... <coughs> sucked so hard they didn't make it into fifth edition, the best edition of them all. Or they, we just didn't talk about them. I might be biased on one of those things. Uh, so first off, uh, I'm going to go completely off the script here. Uh, a few dragons we missed in the episodes. Uh, the pseudo dragon, the fairy dragon, and the dragon turtle. Any of you guys have anything to say on those? I am actually a fan of the fairy dragon. Yeah, they're fun. Yes, they are. They're exceptionally they're fun. fun. Uh, I, do. I, I recall one specific instance where it, it there was a fairy dragon that had essentially created a magic labyrinth, 
uh, that was a uh, detour towards a mage's tower that just led to a, a, a whole fun, delightful bit of fuckery. Yeah, okay. Carol, you got anything to say on those dragons? Maybe the pseudo dragon? I, I know I I know pseudo dragons make good familiars. Um, I actually one, I think that is the one I'm eventually going to get in Pathfinder if I ever keep playing first edition. I don't know. I, it's a, the fairy dragons the one I'm more familiar with because yeah, like like he had, we actually had one where uh, God that was a I don't remember a second ed or third ed. Um, where we actually had a fairy dragon NPC that would come. In. So what the hell do I keep hearing? <laughs> oh, I keep hearing. Is that you? Yeah, that's you making chicken sounds, isn't it? <laughs> fairy dragons do not make chicken sounds. But I, I, I said they're they're interesting. Scott, Scott hands up, hands up. <laughs> Wait, show us that you're not by a cliff, so that they're not backing up on you. <laughs> God be warned. How does it feel to be a meme, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the club. Um, Scott, let's try and distract them from chickens for a while. What do you know about any of these three dragons? <laughs> so how well um, do they fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, with, with with most veracity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that a dragon, turtle, dragon, dragon, turtle, probably slowly, um, but um, I, I, I've used them all in my campaigns at one point or another. Um, you know, uh, the dragon turtle, uh, I, I think is probably really interesting, but very rare because you hardly ever see them. And, you know, unless you're fighting underwater, they're almost unkillable. Um, so they're, they're interesting from that standpoint. But at the same point, you can't really tie them into a campaign. Um, and the other ones, like you said, is a great familiar. But as a DM, I've kind of I can't really say I like the pseudo dragon because it's supposed to be, you know, from one E is that you roll, roll like a D20 um, or um, and then if you roll the 20, then you roll another you know, percentile dice. And if it's like a hundred or something like that, then you get a pseudo dragon. It, it, it's something along those lines. You have to roll two dice in order to get a, in order to get a pseudo dragon. And pretty much every single time I deemed a campaign, every fucking wizard had a pseudo dragon as our goddamn familiar. And I'm like, you did not roll that shit. You did not roll that shit. You just picked it up because you wanted the fucking pseudo dragon. So anyway, th th that's my comment on pseudo dragons. And five gave people what they wanted. You can choose pseudo dragon. Yes, yes, that's true. You can choose. Choose. All, 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 I, all I have to hear from that is pseudo dragons are served with a side of salt. <laughs> I did not say that. Actually, the way I I actually earned my pseudo dragon because, of course, I do organize play and some of the special things you you earn them through. Uh, you earn them right. So I have, in fact, actually, I ran, I GM that one um, and saved that for a wizard. So I could level it up. And then I have like 15 or 16 characters. So they don't get, it's hard for me to level them all. And now that second ed is out, we'll see how many more first edition games there are. Because I didn't quite get to fifth level where I actually would get it. But I have a mini I painted for it and everything. Oh, dra oh, by the way, the dragon turtle. The only thing I really know, because I've never seen one in a campaign, the only thing I really need, uh, I know about him is the fact I have one sitting on my shelf that needs to be painted. So, but I love, I love turtles in this house. This so I uh, wouldn't pass. I would not put it past my Tuesday night GM to actually see one because we we love turtles in this household. How how long has it been sitting on your shelf though? Because the fact that it's yet to be commissioned oh, it's not, a lot about the it's, it's no this one's for me and because I have so many commissions. <clears throat> thank you, Scott. Uh, who knows when it'll ever get done? I got it with uh, Kickstarter four, I think it was uh, for Reapers Kickstarters. So I mean, even even if it never gets painted, that's still you know I'm hope I it is on my list to do at some point. Uh, when I eventually get some time to do it, but I it couldn't be, I can't beat the price. It's just so cheap, inexpensive to buy it that way. 
It's going to cost me a lot more now if I wanted it. But that's it. So unfortunately, that's all I know about it is I have the freaking mini uh, upstairs uh, waiting to be painted. Sure. <coughs> okay. Same question as last time, guys. Are there a lot of these dragons or are there a few of them? Few. I would I say imagine the I'll dragon say, turtle there are few and I would say most of them dragons to me as a rule should be few. They should be rare and special. They so are magical. We're about now we're going into as far as the pseudo and the fairy dragon, much smaller creatures. Yeah, but still I still think they're magical creatures and they should be fairly rare. I also think, I mean, I assume I don't know their lifespans, but I assume they're fairly long. I don't think the short-lived creatures and usually the longer the creature lives, the fewer there are. So I I I still think they should be special. I, I mean I mean yeah they, they, just just like in real life they must have been poached for their ivory. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'd hope they're not hunt well I guess some people would hunt them. Especially yeah, without yeah. the and, and and you can there's a wizard out there saying anything will make your dick hard. <laughs> <laughs> like well, chickens. You know, but it's <laughs> dragon turtles that really get it raging. <laughs> yeah. Just no, um I, I would uh, that's a good question. The way I've played them in my campaigns is that no one really knows much about dragon turtles because you only the only people that see them are normally um sailors and they don't normally come back. So that that's 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 kind of the point is that um you know how many of something are there in places that no one goes to no one knows the ocean can be teeming with dragon turtles for all we know but you know we never know so that's 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 to me they're mysterious fairy dragons way i played them is you see them when they want to be seen um so there could be more of them but they're very again they're very aloof mysterious they're of the fae they're of the fairy so they they can kind of pop in and pop out and you know you can see them whenever they feel like they need, want to be seen um but they're, they they could be quite numerous and then pseudo dragons um pretty much i've only used them in the context of being familiars for pets so i don't see them as being or you know being familiars for wizards kind of as pets i don't see them as having any type of um organized life outside of servitude so and that's maybe my own ignorance but um as far as plentiful or rare such as that given the dice roll that it takes to get one i would say that they're very rare all the other familiars that a wizard can get are basically i mean other than imps and quasits and fairy dragons um i mean um uh, pseudo dragons all the other ones are common right they're mouses and weasels and cats and owls and things that there's millions of so they're common animals and then the other ones are uncommon or rare so i have to assume that the reason that they don't show up that often on the familiar list is because there's not that many of them but um i don't have the lore behind uh and haven't read enough uh, maybe kyle maybe you've read more about that but i have i i i do like that though <laughs> The, the one thing I always say is that people always say that dolphins are helpful and will push you back to shore. And the only reason we hear that is because that's from the people that were pushed back to shore. <laughs> 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 the rest of them were fucked. And those dolphins are made fun of entirely for being human fuckers. <laughs> They're shamed among their people. They're <laughs> shamed among their people. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Let, let's go with some of the missing dragons uh, that we don't see really in 5e anymore because, like I said, they're not good enough. Uh, starting with the gem dragons, we have, let me see, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, topaz, amethysts. Who here is old enough to actually remember a gem dragon? I'm old enough to remember it, but I never saw them. I mean, I, say, I think I'm technically old never, enough, but never yeah. Never campaign with them i mean you know i've played a lot of long campaigns so it's like i haven't played a huge amount of campaigns <clears throat> so needless to say yeah i haven't seen any but i mean so i had to actually go look them up um also i'm getting one of those in the next 
this Kickstarter. So I'll have one of those sitting on my shelf to be painted too. Uh, they're an interesting group though. I mean, they're not evil. They're not, some of them are evil. Some of them are good. They're not like, you know, the metallics, they're all good. And the, the chromatics are all evil. They're kind of in between. Um, they're interested. They're an interesting group and maybe they should be used more in my opinion. Scott, since you've seen them in use, uh, what do you have to say on them? What makes these dragons compared to chromatic and metallics? Let's go with that first. Yeah, well, it's that it, it's kind of piggybacking what Carol was saying is that they're 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 unaligned. You know, right. that's the easiest way of saying it. they're they're unaligned. They're they're in it for themselves, and that probably is their most distinguishing feature. Um, they're true dragons in the sense that that they're not you know like drakes or they're not a combination. Um, of some other thing, uh, so they're they're true dragons, but they're independent, unaligned, and from that standpoint, I would say that they're all neutral. You can have maybe some of them that are neutral good, that are neutral evil, or that are true neutral, but they they exemplify the alignment in that you know they keep to themselves to their own devices and their own motivations. I've never played one in a campaign. Uh, sorry, I've never DM'd one in a campaign. I've played in a couple of games where we've seen them, and they've always been the type of antagonist where you run afoul of one. Um, and I think the one we did was the, was a sapphire dragon. Um, and it um, um, that, that we never I never did a ruby um, or uh, some of the other gems and such as that. But, um, but yeah, we ran afoul of a sapphire dragon, and um, you know. That that was it was kind of backstory. It was a long freaking time ago, so I don't remember all the particulars. But I remember it was enjoyable, and uh, and it was nonplussed with anything that we could do. You know, we 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 couldn't understand its motivations because it it, it really had none other than just for itself. It didn't want to be interested in the worlds of men, and that I think is their distinguishing feature that they're just they just don't give a fuck. All right, all right. Blake. Uh, I, I, yeah, like I said, I've, I've never encountered one, but just based on what I know and what I've heard you guys think or, or say, uh, I think that they would be interesting messengers of Ogma, uh, a, a, a the true neutral deity, uh, just, uh, you know, I, I, I always picture the priestesses of Ogma as purely neutral or, uh, going in just for the sake of knowledge. So having them following a deity like that, or that actually plays like that, I guess is how I would probably implement one if I were to try and do that. But yeah, I don't have enough experience with them to really comment. Sure. I mean, uh, they were first edition, second edition dragons, and only recently for 5e, they've had the uh, Colville resurgence. I'm sure that's Carol where you're getting your gemstone dragon mini from. No, well, no. Oh. Reaper put one in the core set. Uh, oh, it was wow. actually a social media goal. Oh. So they put one in their core set and it will be translucent. I'm not sure. Hopefully clear so you can paint it whatever color you want. Ooh. They were oh. just saying that. That, that yeah. kind of defeats the translucent point. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, no, it got put in Reaper's thing. So, but that's that's probably because they are they are in fifth ed. So, sure, yeah. You know, nobody yeah. else makes them. Yeah, well, you got to get the third party to get the uh, gemstone for third ed, though. Um, yeah, you can, one you other can, thing you I'll say, any, I don't think anyone any, else any, any pride fest and find all sorts of glitter to sprinkle on them, make nice and shiny. I guarantee you, <laughs> glitter that works. Two. All right. Thanks, Blake, for helping. <laughs> uh, the only thing I'll add to what you guys were saying is that they t apparently tend to specialize in psionics. So, yeah. Being the out for themselves, yeah. knowledge seekers, and not knowing what the hell they're thinking, <laughs> probably because they're already in your head. How could you ever make one happy? All right. Yeah. Enough about those losers. Do they have a place in 5e? Well, no, the answer is a hand job. <laughs> I think that once that once and I'm kind of hoping that maybe that that they do this, 
Um, when I say they, I mean uh, our friends at Wizards of the Coast. And this is just something that I would like to see. I would like to see probably a larger supplement that incorporates psionics a little. Now, this is a controversial subject. Not everyone likes psionics. Um, but I, I always loved psionics actually. And I went in and, um, and in my campaign, I actually made a lot of spells in 5e that basically mimic, uh, 5e, uh, sorry, that mimic, um, um, psionic abilities. Uh, so you have like mind blast and all these other ones like that. Um, so I th think if you have a larger expansion to allow for, you know, expanded psionics, that I think that there's a place for the gym dragons. The um, um, obsidian dragon, for instance, was very well noted for its uh, for its um, um, uh, psionic abilities, and and I can see them basically being as like planar creatures uh, that aren't really native to the prime. So I, I think there's a space for them in five E, but I think you have to have it has to be not by itself, but another type of expansion maybe into you know um, a 5e manual of the planes for instance maybe that could then incorporate some of the stranger creatures and the gym dragons being one of those creatures that's how i could see it being introduced so that's how i would do it but that's just my opinion carol blake talk at the same time blake obviously over carol yeah thank <laughs> thank thank you thank you um but, but no, actually, I, I do agree with that. I think that psionics, especially uh, in an Underdark campaign or something, uh, yeah. area that features heavily with Mind Flayers and, right. and those type of creatures, I think that that would, yeah, if, that, if this is something that they're specializing in, I think that would be an excellent uh, opportunity to utilize them a little bit more effectively and to uh, uh, expound on their abilities and uh, uh, probably even their lore a little bit. Yeah. So, ah, you go, go first. Whenever you're ready, Carol. All right, go ahead. All yeah. right. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so, no, I think well, this would be my answer for pretty much anything. I think anything has a place in fifth ed mm -hmm. if you can, as long as you balance it right and, you know, don't overtune it uh, or at least find it, you know, figure out what level of characters you're going to put it against and make sure it's balanced. I think anything can be added. Um, just the gemstone dragons, the other ones that, that were mentioned on our list, uh, you know, the was it purple, uh, orange, and what the frick was, I don't remember what the other color was. Yellow. Uh, yellow. And thanks for bringing yellow, it up. Before right. she continues, now let's talk about the chromatic dragons that didn't make the cut. I'm orange, so sorry. yellow, and purple deep. I am so sad there are no purple dragons. And I don't mean, oh, that's a dinosaur, though. I don't mean Barney. No, I, I, I'm a big fan of purple, so. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I looked up the purple purple Let's dragon. Holy crap, they're kind of scary. They're asses. They are legitimately scary dragons. They're, they're the ones found in with the hanging out with the drow. In the Underdark. So I was like, I'm so sad. There's no purple dragons to speak. I guess actually there can be, um, but they're just exceptionally rare. I thought the neat thing about them is uh, the fact that they like to in, uh, mentally enslave things. They also like to explore. They have like two hobbies, exploring and enslaving people. And their diet is like souls. And I'm like, oh, these guys are fun. <laughs> Um, I didn't have time to look up the other two, but I looked up purple. Just like said purple is my favorite color. So, they will say, yeah, I'm sad there aren't purple dragons uh, on a grander scale. But they would be a great BBEG for a you know a long term campaign, in my opinion. Just to go ahead and fill you in, uh, the orange ones are very very familiar with highway safety, and the yellow <laughs> ones are to uh, Europhilia. <laughs> highway safety highway safety so you see them out you know directing traffic I get it so they're good dragons <laughs> well not necessarily you know I've known some traffic cops that are pretty pretty you know pretty tough you know or they're always taking coffee breaks and always taking coffee breaks and looking for speeders in school zones terrible oh, 
The ones I'm thinking are the ones wearing the orange vests that you see at like construction zones. Oh, I don't yeah. see the the stadies just pulling yeah, yeah. you over. Except, except or, the sign that they have that they're holding up, all four of it is stop. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah I I decided because we got the rundown. Well, I, I couldn't really look at it till after work, so I didn't have a huge amount of time before this. So I decided to pick out a few, you know, at least one in each section. So I went with purple because it's a favorite color. So who wants to take the next one? Because <laughs> it's not me. No, 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 Carol, we're sticking with you. Oh, no. Dragons, go. No freaking clue. I All can right, look Blake, up. talk over her quickly. Oh, I, I, I'll talk about the piss play dragon as much as you want. The witch oh, God, dragon. I chose the wrong person. <laughs> Scott, talk over Blake and Carol. <laughs> no, yeah, and I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know anything about those dragons. I, I, I had left the game uh, for a long hiatus uh, and never really got into uh, purple, orange, or yellow dragon. I think yellow dragons, maybe a little bit when I was maybe every now and then dabbing and reading back a little bit now and then, but... I mean, I'm totally in the dark about those about the uh, about those dragons. I just don't oh, know. We stumped a Scott. No, no, not about him. Uh, I'm not surprised. But, but, no, no, it's, it's, he's I mean, been drinking a lot today. He doesn't remember a lot. And yeah, there's been a lot of chickens. If I start drinking again, I'll probably recall. So, um, <laughs> but, yeah. Don Julio everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, about the purple, just, purple dragons of 1974. <laughs> I just took a look at uh, the Forgotten Realms wiki, which I've been sort of getting my info from, and there there is actually no orange dragon on this list. Correct. So they really have been forgotten. Yeah. Uh, if I do, I can always look up a general Google search too. But um, yeah, no orange. I don't dragon. think they were Forgotten Realms dragon. I, I think they were still no, a great not. hawk. I think Maybe you're correct. That's it. Yeah, they, they were they were the expanded chromatic dragons, but what but but within the Greyhawk realm, it wasn't. I don't think they were in Forgotten Realms. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we we have the one dragon made it. I know that. We we have the one that decided on this topic, not on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Great job! So I found the I found I things perfectly. Well, so Blake, do you remember anything said earlier, or do I need to drop it all? I, I I wasn't joking about piss play. I don't fucking know. <laughs> All right. So the three uh, extra chromatic dragons, uh, they were uh, issue dragon 65, I believe, something close to Four. that. 64. 64. 69. Think... One of those. Um, they were 86, however. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> because no one cared about them. Uh, essentially, they descended from Tiamat's sister, who uh, said she looked fat in that dress. And Tiamat killed her and had all the other ones killed. Well, well, first she yanked that weave. Damn. <laughs> and so what I know about these guys are orange dragons are jungle, um, river, or lake dragons, typically. Uh, yellows are anywhere where there's enough air and enough water. They happen to be the fastest of all the dragons. And then finally, uh, as Carol said, you know, you got your purple ones found in the Underdark. They don't usually come up on the surface unless they are, it's at night. And they are similar to red dragons, actually. And they also have this perverse pleasure in killing other dragons just to prove they're better. And they're smarter than most other ones as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They were like arguably the smartest dragons out there. Sorry, excuse me. No, no. Um, but they also seem like they also like to, if I recall, they also like to mind control things. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, like they like to make drow their slaves. I mean, you know, that seems um, that seems fair. The sure. drow like to make everyone else slaves. So, you know. Oh, uh, what, there was uh, one book for the Forgotten Realms has my favorite dragon in it, a purple radioactive dragon that uh, grew two heads, each with a distinct personality. And so while one wanted to kill, maim, and control, the other one just wanted to look pretty for the, all the parties. 
<laughs> I love I love uh, things like that where the two where it's a two headed monster, a multi head monster, and the heads have two different goals. Well, All you're the- in luck because we're about to talk about Ettens. What? <laughs> oh, hey, oh wait, I, wait. I, I, was, I was just going to say, okay, yellow dragons like heat and water and steam. So I wasn't wrong when I was saying they were piss dragons. No, no, yeah, you were absolutely <laughs> correct. You got it right on the spot. They just fly through the air, straight into the water, anytime they get. It just depends on which side it's on the left or the right if you take it on the top of the bottom. Sure, sure. Now, speaking of beating a joke down like a dead horse, there are undead dragons, and I think this is something that people actually know about. I'm going to skip yeah. over the boring ones, which are the zombie dragons, the ghost dragons, the vampire dragon. Let's just go with the dracolich. What's oh, a dracolich? Hang on, hang on. Hang on. I'm, I'm confused. What, what is a vampire dragon, by the way? It's a, you know what a vampire compared to a lich is, yes? Well, well, hang on. What, I haven't seen any of the previous shows. What's a vampire? <laughs> <laughs> well, Blake, you can go back and watch them on YouTube or Twitch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> they want to suck your blood. Boo. <laughs> Lost him at suck. <laughs> You're talking about a Draco Lich, huh? Draco Lich, yeah. Let's go. No, when you talked about that, Before forgot. Scott starts thinking about beak sucking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Carol, what were you going to say about Draco Liches? I was going to say they're freaking scary as fuck. That's what they are. Although you can find their phylacteries pretty easily because I believe it's right in their chest. Good luck getting to it, though. Um, they said they are, I said, you know, it's funny. You mentioned like a book in the Forgotten Realms. And I remember, I remember reading all about the cult of the dragon and such. And their goal was to, you know, basically raise a bunch of Draco liches across the realms. Um, Carol, you've been missing the, the path between the roles. I've been talking about that every single time and showing off the book come uh, on you can find it on twitch or on youtube yeah amazing that um but yeah they, but um the neat thing is they're they're under they, they keep all their like uh normal abilities they had in in life so you know if it's a red dragon they still breathe fire but they're undead so i'm not sure i believe they actually can make undead too those zombie dragons or zombies. It said oftentimes you'll find zombies in the presence of these dragons. So it said they're they're really, really, really scary. You know, as if dragons aren't really, really scary to begin with. But these things I always found rather intimidating. Undead anything. You add undead to anything and it's just and make it a lich. So it's even worse. You know, it's just uh, I don't like liches, and I don't like it's not like lich dragons. Nope, nope, nope. Blake, dragons, uh, liches. Well, some, some, dragons. Something that something that I I should have done more research on before uh, joining this evening's conversation. But I would be curious what the source of the first Draco lich was. Uh, I, I would be curious what what uh, what a uh, color originated that because I would almost be curious to get green. I do not actually know. And it probably also depends on what setting because I'm, there's a you know, one in the realms, you got one in Greyhawk, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen any, you know what, that's one thing I don't think I've ever come across in Pathfinder was a Draco Lich, which is interesting because that would have been a really interesting baddie to put in the finale for the, uh, for Pathfinder 1 for the special because it was all undead. We did a spectral dragon. I had to fight a spectral dragon in that. And it was amazing because we nerfed it because we had somebody who had Pathfinder's version of Death Ward, which nullifies all negative uh, energy damage. So all it could really do was um, bite at me (laughs) and it became a slap fight. Couldn't do the negative levels that it couldn't take I any would, negative levels. I would levels. love to watch that. It was such a so amazing. Uh, it, that whole plot line, by the way, is 
fantastic. And we see the results of it in Pathfinder too. So, but yeah, yeah. So exactly. spectral dragon, man, that thing is scary as fuck too. It's a ghost. That's a dragon, and it said basically does touch attacks for sure. negative levels. Carol, so, we don't have the time to talk about dragons that aren't in the cool Dungeons and Dragons. We're, uh, we're, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're talking about special dragons. Stop talking about special dragons. Yeah, shut up, Carol. No, <laughs> talk over me. But, but yeah, no, Dracolicious. Aside from we that, already we, talked about undead earlier. That was last month. This is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving hey, turkey. Wait, wait, wait. Dracolich. Dracolich is undead. So, hey. We're specializing in dragons this time, Carol. Pay it attention. Is it is a dragon. I'm talking but, about a dragon. But, but yeah, no, I, I would Rock honestly up. be very curious to see uh, something about the source of those because uh, I think that there is some interesting lore development aspects to that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure there is. Well, said. This uh, look up the cult of the dragon too for Forgotten Realms. That Don't tell me what to do, Carol. What? <laughs> Damn it, Carol! Don't tell me what to do, Carol. Well, you guys are really mean to Carol tonight. There's, I mean, even more than normal. I know. But, uh, I, I thought it was going to be pick on you all night. You. No. Yeah, I know. I know. For the chicken fuckery. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, I did a good job training them in. Sure, that pitcher throws a slow ball, but just because you can hit a home run doesn't mean you have to every time. All right, well, you, you know what? Tell us about Dracoliches. So, so I'm most familiar with the Dracolich uh, Dragotha. That's the one from that's one from Greyhawk lore. Um, and I'm trying to think if you see in 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 a lot of the one e greyhawk stuff um dragons were spellcasters and so they had a lot of the same motivations for prolonging life and staying long forever um that you know magic users would whenever they would then transition over to lichdom so um I, th there's a fair amount of lore on uh, on the creation of uh dragotha uh I'm I'm sure you can find it online. I don't have it all right in front of me. I probably should have studied a little bit more before the before the episode. But that's the one named one that that you'll see. And I think um um you know it's a fairly famous one. And I'm trying to and it and it basically became a if I'm remembering correctly, it more or less became a Dracolich the same way a magic user you know basically basically makes a deal with Orcus you know. Um, but, but, I, but I could be wrong with that. I, I, I could be wrong. It could be confusing something with something else. It's possible. I'm getting old and all this gray hair is having mental effects on me. But um, <laughs> I, I, um, I, I don't like the Dracolich. Oh. I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I, it's maybe a slightly, you know, maybe a slightly contrarian position, but um, that's the one dragon that I'd, I never really figured out uh, as to why it exists. And um, it, to me, it was just that, you know, you, you have these ancient dragons and then, you know, worms and ancient red worms. I mean, and then, you know, how do you make them even a little bit more badass? And I'm thinking maybe that's, that, that was just a bit lazy uh, on, the, uh, on the guys that were, that were writing that up. Um, that, you know, the dragon doesn't need to be made scarier, um, you know, when, when they're at that power level and they can do the things they can and they can cast the spells they want to, why add, uh, you know, that to them? And of course, that being said, in my own campaign, I'm in the middle of taking an ancient red dragon and turning him into a fucking lich, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Scott. Yeah. Ask the, seriously. Um, said I think one of the better answers that is ask the cult of the dragon. Uh, they're basically they want to make an army of them to obliterate everything. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I, it's just that the whole thing that for me, dragons are such a big part. I think you know, Blake, you you touched on it. There's such a good part of lore that's associated with about the creation and why they're there, what they motivate. You know, they're all they're they're really good, well formed NPCs. Uh, and if I'm not going to have a and there's already a space for the dragons or dragon kind that are not, you know, aligned with tons of lore, we call them drakes, you know, and that's that's what they're for. They're 
just if you want to have a dragon like creature that's a little bit of a badass that you find in a cave somewhere or they have their own little thing They're, they don't have a huge backstory they don't have tmi they don't have bahama they don't have all that crap going on those are drakes and that's what they're there for so why you know why do that so that that's that's maybe was my motivation is that if you just need to just uh just a tough dragon like creature there's plenty of them there's wyverns there's there's even my my favorite uh if you're in that thing is the dracolisk which is a cross between a basilisk a greater basilisk and a and a black dragon love yeah. those things, you know love them um so if, if you have these cross-breeded um, dragons that are or dragon kind that are not aligned with typical lore, then there's always a space for those. And uh, those uh, are in your, uh, yes. You're showing your southernness. It's crossbred. There you go. <laughs> I Good. thought with your chicken lore that you would know that, but. That's right. That's it's right. Honestly, it's all talking. about those big juicy breasts, isn't it? Brennan is what the colonel does. Hey, wait, wait. What was the <laughs> Alabama thing we had like from a couple weeks ago from the inbred? I can't remember what yeah, it was. I said something about inbreeding, inbreeding or something. I don't know. I don't he know. did. I don't remember now what the heck the creature was. <laughs> well, we all know incest is best, which draws <laughs> us to the end of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. We're going to make this as quick as possible. Dracoliches. Everyone's been talking about chromatic. Why not do a metallic Dracolich in the same way that you would make an elf lich, a good lich at the end of the day? Anyway, one last dragon group, planar dragons. Every plane's got one because, fuck, everyone loves dragons, but there's only one that made it into 5e, the shadow dragon. What's its plate, guys? Come on. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and chime in because go. I have Dick waiting for me in the other room. So I'm going to sign off uh -oh. and say that I don't know anything about them, and I wish them all the best. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> all right. Good night. Um, I looked. I had to look them up too because God knows I don't have anything powerful enough to fight those guys. Uh, yeah, they're 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 like I don't know. Are they the most powerful one right now? I mean. Holy crap. I mean, the, with their shadow powers, they can just take away abilities and skills or whatever, part of your mental, part of you with some of their attacks. That's what I was reading. I'm like, what? They're so scary as fuck. Scott, I, I, what do you have to say on it? Well, it, it, I mean... Again, you don't even like Dracoliches. Do you even like the Shadow Dragon? Dragons? Not really. Not not really. It, it, it's like I said. It's one of these things, and and it's my own ignorance that that I haven't done the sufficient research. Um, like for instance, if someone asked me my my opinion on the you know Raven Queen or something, I'm like I don't know. And, and it, it's it's not because I have a f strongly formed opinion. It's just that some of these newer ones, I haven't had a chance to really dig into the lore and understand why they're around. So it, it, it's, I like the what I've read about them. I like the fact that they can blink in and blink out. I like the fact that they use shadows to their advantage. I like the fact that um, that 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 they can almost remain completely invisible whenever they want to, um, which makes them formidable um, formidable adversaries. But I don't know enough about their story, about their origin, about their lore, to really form a strong opinion one way or the other. So I'll, I'll have to leave that one at that. That okay. darkness effect, yeah, they can throw darkness and you're like you can't dispel it. And from what I read is you have to actually have a twilight it, domain cleric with you and you'll be fine. Yeah, you have to have something tied to the plane of shadow. That right. You have to have something tied to the plane of shadow. Is fucked. I mean, that, yeah. And that, I, I, I would say, yeah, not my favorite. I don't like, I guess I don't like things with a lot of, with things that are really hard to overcome unless you have a very specific person in your group. I, well, I'll, I could see using one. Uh, once again, as a BBEG, and you have the players themselves, one of the things they have to do is actually get attuned. They have to do something to gain this magic to be able to see it, to fight it. 
because its normal abilities are bad enough. I mean, well, all dragon, you know, a lot of dragons have frightful presence too, which will make you go run screaming from them for X amount of rounds, or or well, actually, in fifth that I just you just can't approach it. Sure. So um, all right, well, I'm going to cut you off, Carol. You can go on for a while, and we one yeah. of these days we'll just have a show of you talking for an hour. It'll be great, wonderful. No. <laughs> we'll never watch it. Um, and anyway, so let's have our final thoughts. Carol, I'm going to skip you. We've heard all your thoughts. Blake? <laughs> Blake's busy. Blake, that's interesting. All right. Scott, <laughs> final thoughts. Uh, I will say my final thoughts to, uh, to, uh, to a Carol now. Well, I want to hear her final thoughts so I can contradict whatever she has to say. Uh, gur gurgle, right, gurgle. You, uh, ball sweat, ball sweat. Uh, yes, yes. Give me more. Perfect. <laughs> I can't talk though. Uh, my final thoughts. I lie. Dragons are always an interesting topic. Um, I don't know. That's about all, I guess. Contradict. Damn, I can't argue with that. Yeah, no, I can't. Damn it. Hot. Damn it. Yes, you can. Chickens are more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, final thoughts for me are um, dragons are fun. Dragons are great. The only <laughs> slight thing I like to say is that um, I, I do like to see the lore behind them. I, I like to see how you can weave them into the story instead of being, um, you know, almost like a wandering monster that's just supposed to be really tough and really hard and really, you know, tough to beat, but no real story behind it. With the dragon, you need a story. That's, that's kind of my point there. And as far as the last bit of a thought I have is that, you know, be careful when you're playing uh, with friends and you introduce chicken fuckery into your, to your campaign. <laughs> Make sure that you uh, that you know the people that you're that you're playing with. Otherwise, you might offend them. That's all. Not it's it's not for everybody. It's just you know. It's oh, just not. I mean, you could say about a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Watch what you say when you don't know the people. Right. All the chicken fuckery. That's how you find out who your good <laughs> friends are. That's all I have to say. All right, guys. Good night. Uh, this is Murder Hobos Between the Roll. You can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. If you're lazy like I am or Carol is and just don't want to show up to any Sunday hey! whatsoever, uh, you can just watch it on YouTube. It's not uh, being lazy. I have, I play, I told you how we can play. So like, it smells like nine games. If you want to get in on the chicken circle jerk, uh, just email okay. us on Twitter or whatever it is and uh, you can have a seat here with all these other chicken fuckers. <laughs> really oh, well and fun. finally, uh, we're not sure if we're doing the next Tuesday. We'll find out if we are. I'm sure we're talking about Drake's, but uh, next month is going to be a good one where we're going to be offering up uh, either one really amazing one shot or multiple shitty one shots, just depending on how many I work on personally. Um, <laughs> I so want to do this. I so want to be. Other involved. than that, I'm going to tell our invisible person to turn us off and wave for the camera, everybody. All right. I hope they're shutting it off soon. Maybe you're getting us. Oh, God, I'm still talking. We're not ending it. We're waiting for Blake. Blake. Both. <laughs>